I've already showed you how we take a foot, a customer's foot, and we make a draft. And the draft is the representation of the foot that can be used to make a shoe or a sandal or a boot of any heel height and any toe shape. And now I'm going to show you how we take this two-dimensional draft and make a three-dimensional last that will make, that represents the foot. So we started with 3D, we've gone to 2D, now I'm going to show you how we get back to 3D. Okay. So you remember the draft has uh, the measures of the circumferences all along the foot. And what we did is we created an outline. This is where the pen traced around the outside. So this is a tracing of the foot. What I want to do next is to make an outline that has a toe shape. You'll see from this draft that the foot is that long, but the shoe is that long. And many of you will know that, uh, you know, there's a space in front of your foot when you're wearing a shoe. And if we didn't, we'd have a very square Scandinavian looking shoe, like a wallaby or uh, some of the uh, Nordic brands. But uh, in the West, we, uh, in, in our part of the West, we like to have a nice rounded toe shape that extends usually about uh, two to three sizes uh, longer than the foot. So using a bit of artistic skill, uh, anatomical knowledge and uh, experience, uh, the red line indicates what I think would be a good toe shape. I've brought in the uh, big toe slightly. I've gone out a uh, good three sizes longer than the foot. I don't want to contain the fifth toe because that hurts, but I can contain the foot just behind the joint to stop the foot sliding around in it. So the red plus the black creates the outline. And here I've already cut it out. So we've got that coming off and uh, cut it out. And what I've done is I've marked on the outline where the instep, the top of the instep, and the outside joint measure is. This will come important in a minute. So here we have the outline and the terminology by the way is the outline is you know the is the what's flat on the ground and uh, eventually it's going to be like this on the last uh, from that block of wood. Obviously on a high heel the, uh, the outline is going to climb up a ramp like that. On a low heel, it's going to be lower and lower. And on a flat shoe, it'll be just flat. So we're going to make a last with a one inch heel. That's a 26 millimeter heel. And so there's going to be a slight elevation of the back part of the uh, last off the ground. And so when it comes down to meet the ground, because that's the fifth toe joint, I know from my studies of anatomy and experience that the bit that hits the ground will look like that. So what I've got to do now, if that is the uh, outline, I want to create a profile. So just like that's the outline there, the profile is that shape. So those are the two terminologies I use. In architecture, it's plan and section. In last making, it's outline and profile. Okay, so taking the outline, uh, this is the point here where the foot comes down the ramp. Because on a one inch heel, say with a quarter inch sole, or a 26 mil heel with a six mil sole, I have to subtract the thickness of the sole. So the, what's called the actual pitch of the heel is 20 millimeters, not 26, because the pitch is the heel height less the thickness of the sole. And that gets quite important when you have, say, somebody with a, a one inch platform or a 26 platform that uh, the pitch of the last is distinct from the heel height. So I've marked 20 mil, because there will be a 6 mil sole here and a 6 mil top piece. So that'd be 20 plus 6 is 1 inch, 26 mil. And the uh, foot comes down to the ground there. So I've got this bit of the ramp here. And then if I put that there, the back of the heel actually is that line there. So I've created a back line uh, for the back of the heel. So that creates that. Then if you look at, say, this cast, you'll see how round 
that bottom surface is. So with bespoke orthopedic, and if you look at this orthotic, you see how round it is. With bespoke orthopedic, we don't have flat bottoms on our lasts. We have round dynamic shapes. So I put a, a bit of a curve there to provide the wood so that although that's the outside feather line that you'll see from the outside, in the middle of the heel is this curve. Okay, so we've got uh, that line. Then I put this back and the toe comes to here, and uh, I know the ball joint is, is here, so put that on, there's the, there's the ball joint of the foot, and so the, the uh, front of the last is going to start to climb, and I put an 8 millimeter spring. Spring is the bit under the shoe, when the, foot rests, the shoe rests on the ground, you can have a, a bit of spring under there, that's what it's called. So there's your 8 mil, there's the length of your last, the toe comes to there, and this is your extra bit, your extra three sizes to create the toe shape. Okay, this is then the standard length of the last, which in this case is about 27 and a half, 28 millimeters. So what I want to do now is create the back profile, okay, this sh shape in here. And the back profile is the shoe will be one-fifth of the last length, the standard last length. So one-fifth of 27 and a half is about 5.5. So I measure up 5.5 from there to there, and that's that line. So it's 27 and a half from there to there, 5.5 from there to there. I then make a parallel line that's six millimeters in, and that creates a box. So there's a little box there. It's five and a half by six millimeters, and I just create that curve in it. And then I just continue it up another 10 mil. So you want to have the last sticking up when you make lasting up the shoe. You want to have 10 mil of last sticking up above the shoe. Okay, so now I've got the back of the last, the profile. I've got the bottom shape. How do I create this? Okay. So you remember when I uh, was measuring uh, the foot to make this profile, um, I did a short heel measure which went around there, and then I did a long heel measure which went around there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, on this profile, I'm going to do that in reverse. So just like uh, it says on here that that short heel measure is 332 millimeters around there. I put the 332 on there. See, so 332. So that loop is 332 in circumference. And then I make a curve that corresponds to the uh, tape bending around the back of the heel, like that. And then I put it there and I create a curve, okay? So that blue line represents the curve of all possible positions of that top of the instep. The in middle of the instep, the actual instep measure is distinct from the top of the instep, which remember was that measure. That is 364. So I do 364 on here, so 364. Again, I make a curve that corresponds to the bottom of the foot, and I then put it on this point, which corresponds to the heel, okay? So I put it on there, and I cut that curve. So this curve is the range of all possible uh, top of the insteps, and this curve is the range of all possible long heel measures or instep measures. So the next measures I did that went to the same place. You remember uh, I did a short heel measure around there, and then I did a top of the instep measure around there. So they both go to the same point. So by finding this radius and that radius, I can locate it on the profile. So I've already transferred with this. This point corresponds to that point. And this is 275 in circumference. 
So just like before, I put 275 there. And this time, I put it on here and imagine that this is going underneath the bottom of the last, okay? So it's there, but now I put it there, so the center is there, and I trace that. So there's only one point that has that radius around the heel and that radius around the top of the instep measure, and that's where the red line and the blue line cross. So I know that my last profile is going to be there. And here you can see I've given a couple of millimeters uh, for error and uh, because the wood is going to be sanded down. Okay, so again, the same principle. Uh, when we did the long heel measure, we came to the first cuneiform bone. And then we did the uh, circumference, the instep measure. Again, we went all the way around to the first cuneiform bone. So we're going to do the same. And this says 264. And we know it was located there. So we found the radius of 264. So we have 264 there. And we put it on here. Uh, do you see how that's corresponding to going around underneath the foot here? We put that there, transfer it here so that the middle of it's there, and we cut this radius here. And that corresponds to that red line. So again, the only place where those two measures intersect, the heel and the instep measure, the long heel and the intersect measure, are where the red and the blue cross. So now we have that point and that point. We know the toe, uh, the end of the toe is there. So in front of that we can create a nice curve. Okay, that's the toe. And then we've got, again, just like here, we go 10 millimeters above. That'll be the top of the shoe, uh, or maybe slightly lower, but we want to have 10 millimeters of last sticking out of the cone, sticking out above the top of the shoe. And so we've got that line, and we've got that line, and then using experience and uh, good judgment, we then join that and that up with this smooth curve, and then uh, put the top cone plane on. So this was done right at the beginning, just from the first principles of heel height and the uh, last length. This was created from the standard last length. Um, then we located these two points for the instep, and then uh, we know the toe length is there, so the end of the big toe is where this rises up the thickest. We can draw that, we can draw that, we join them up, and we put the top cone plane, and that creates the profile. Okay, so I've cut out the profile, and I've cut out the outline, and so now, this is going to be the last looking down from above, and this will be the last looking from the side. And you can see that what we've got is like an architecture section and plan for a building, only this time it's a really dynamic 3D shape of the last. We're soon, in a minute, we're going to have a look at, we've taken this piece of wood, it's local ash, it's a spoke, we'll talk about that. But the main thing I want to show you is we're going to cut out the plan or the outline on the horizontal bit. And then when we've cut that out, we're going to cut out the profile to match that shape.